technology and teamwork, making the streets of Chicago safer. I'm Peter Carl, and this is Chicago Crime Watch. What can you do to protect your home and your valuables from a burglar? Residents in the Third Ward got some answers, straight from the experts, the burglars themselves. You're going to hear me say this over and over again at this presentation. These are former burglars, okay? Today we come in peace. We come to give information. Former burglars. These men are currently serving time in the Illinois Department of Corrections on burglary charges. They are taking part in a Keeping It Real burglary presentation. Unbelievable. You never would have thought about bringing burglars in to tell you about how to protect yourself. It was the best thing that we've had to help the residents. My name is Marcus. I'm 45 years old. I'm doing eight and a half years for residential burglary. This is my third conviction. I'm a career burglar. My name is Rick. I'm 25 years old. I'm serving five years for residential burglary. My name is Kirk. I'm 43. I'm serving time for commercial and residential burglary. My name is Chris. I'm 19. I'm serving six years for two residential burglaries. The Keeping It Real program is a partnership between the CPD and the Safer Foundation. It was started seven years ago by Chicago police officer Modesi Jointer in an effort to deglamorize crimes involving guns, drugs, and gangs. The burglary presentation is a spin-off from the original program. And the main uh, purpose for this uh, presentation is to kind of uh, give the community a large awareness about uh, things that they can do to possibly prevent being victims of burglary. This Keeping It Real was presented during a safety and security town hall meeting sponsored by Third Ward Alderman Pat Dowell. The Third Ward has seen an increase in burglaries. We're trying to respond to that, you know, be proactive in terms of giving people information about how to be safe and to hear about some of the strategies that the police department is implementing to um, prevent burglaries from occurring in the ward. During the session, one of the first things the inmates talked about was how they picked their target homes. The key was finding a neighborhood where no one paid attention to their neighbors. I'm from Chicago. I look for communities that don't, if it's not your property, it's not my problem. But then when somebody else's property gets broken, oh, but it's my property. So that's what I look for. Uh, pretty much the same thing, single family homes in neighborhoods where people just mind their business and as long as you're not bothering them, they don't care. I basically look for the same type of areas because the nosy neighbor is a problem for me. Once they pick their home, what is their favorite point of entry? For me, in the suburbs, most of the doors are usually open, so you just walk right in the front door. But if not, I'll go in a back window or a back door. A lot of times i found the door will just be open, the front or the back, or window wells where you can jump right down. It's very private. I like windows, doors, especially if you got an uh, air conditioner sitting in the window and it ain't secure. I can just push the air conditioner and go on in your house. Once inside, how long does it take to clear out what they want? In and out in less than five minutes, but then if it's one of them nice quiet neighborhoods where nobody cares, I can just make me a sandwich, watch some TV, put my feet up. Yeah, the same thing, as little as three minutes, or if I feel more comfortable in that neighborhood, I might spend an hour or two in that house. Once I cut the alarm off, I could be in there anywhere between five minutes. If you go on a vacation, I'll be in there a whole day. When you come back, nothing is there, furniture, nothing. The inmates talked about how they know where to find the brain boxes to security alarms, where they look for valuables, why dogs are not deterrents, and why cats sitting in a window are a telltale sign you're not at home. They also give homeowners tips on what to do to secure their doors and windows so no one can break in. They got a plate called a door plate that wraps around your door. The lock itself, you want to get that installed on your deadbolt lock. Then you want to get another metal plate that in installs to the frame of the door and get some three-inch screws. Don't get the Phillip heads on your, um, your deadbolt locks because that's what they come with. All, all door locks come with Phillip head screws. When we come up in the house, we have a Phillip heads in our pocket. You, if, Throughout the presentation, the message was clear. Um, the best way to help fight crime is for neighbors to look out for one another. If you came here to hear the one quick fix to keep you from getting your home burglarized, you're in the wrong place. What I hope you walk away from here, or what we hope you walk away from here understanding is that you must layer. You must have the nosy slash good neighbor. You must use good locks on your doors. You must also 
have a sense of community on your block, right? And you cannot be apathetic. Oh, well, didn't happen to me, no big deal. What I think I got most from it was the fact that we really have got to just stick together as a community and neighbors have to be more neighborly and report the crimes. I am going to be more active in our, our block club that, that's starting up. I'm really gonna start pushing my neighbors to, to, to do that because I don't want these guys jumping you know, over the fence and nobody not say anything. You know? As for the former burglars, they say they are paying the price for their deeds and now they just want to give back for the trouble they caused. I'm giving back for something that I did wrong. And it's helping me come back into the world and proving to them that I did change. If I can give somebody that pertinent information, it was, it was cool for me. You know, even though I had to come through this, maybe I can prevent somebody else from being a victim. I understand that I ruined a lot of people's lives. You know, I used to look at it like this was a victimless crime. It was just a, a crime of property. But it was no telling what these people had to do to achieve that property, the sacrifices they had to make or their children or whoever had to suffer in order to replace this. The four inmates are currently serving their time at the Safer Foundation's Crossroads Adult Transitional Center. That's it from the Crime Watch News Team. I'm Peter Carl. Thank you for watching.